Hello there everybody and welcome back to the Mr. Sin channel. Today we're going to be going over Unit 3, Topic 3 of AP Psychology, the Visual Anatomy. This video is all about your eye. The human eye is made up of a variety of different parts. The outside layer of the eye is made up of a white fibrous tissue known as the sclera. This protects the eye and forms the substance of the eye. Now if we move from our light source to the eye, we come in contact with the cornea. This protects the eye and allows for the light to bend. The cornea is transparent and if it is irregularly shaped, it could impact a person's ability to focus. This is no known as astigmatism. There's also a thin layer of epithelial cells known as conjunctiva. These cells protect the cornea, so if you rub your eyes or get some dust in your eyes, it doesn't scratch or damage your cornea. Now right behind the cornea is a part of the eye that is filled with fluid. This part of the eye is the aqueous humor. This is made up of water and salt and helps maintain pressure within the eye and also provides nourishment to the cornea and lens. Moving inward, we then have the iris. The iris is a ring-shaped membrane located behind the cornea and is what determines a person's eye color. The iris surrounds the pupil and is two different muscles. It doesn't actually receive light, but it does control how much light enters the eye by contracting or relaxing, which causes more or less light to enter the pupil. The pupil is the dark part of your eye. It is the hole between the iris. This is where light passes through upon entering the eye, and the amount of light is controlled by the iris. Behind the pupil and the iris is the lens. The lens will change shape to help focus objects onto the retina. The lens is biconvex, which just means it's curved on both ends. The ability for the eye to change focus is known as accommodation. As we get older, it can become more difficult for the lens to change its shape. This is why as you get older, it's common that people will need glasses. One other problem that can occur with the lens is cataracts. This is the clouding of the lens. It causes your vision to become blurry and will keep progressively getting worse if not treated. Once light goes through the lens, it goes to the vitreous humor. This is a clear gel-like fluid in the vitreous cavity. It is what gives the eye support and shape. It's transparent so light can go through it and it's located between the lens and the retina. When light reaches the back of the eye, it hits a structure known as the retina. Think about this as like a screen on the back of the eye. The retina is made up of layers of light sensitive cells known as photoreceptors. The retina is the entire back of the eyeball. The photoreceptors in the retina are what convert light into neural impulses that allow the brain to process what the eye is seeing. Located on the retina, primarily found directly back from the lens, is the fovea or fovea centralis, which is a small depression filled with cones. Rods and cones are types of photoreceptors found in the retina. Cones are what helps you see fine detail, allow for clear vision, and allow you to see color. They need moderate to bright light for activation. Cones have three different photopigments, which are what allow you to see color. If we look on the outer edge of the retina or the peripheral, we can see rods. These are visual receptors that allow you to see in dim light. Rods all contain the same photopigment, which results in an inability to provide any color information. This is why when you're looking in a dim to dark room, you may be able to see shapes, but everything else will be in black and white. As soon as you start to have more light, your cones can start to activate, and you'll be able to see colors again. Located in the middle of the retina, in front of the rods and the cones, are the bipolar cells. These cells send visual information from the rods and cones to the ganglion cells. The retinal ganglion cells are in front of the bipolar cells and are made up of axons that relay information from the retina to the brain through the optic nerve. Just behind the retina is a membrane that is made up of a bunch of different blood vessels. This is the choroid. This helps keep retinal cells and other cells in the eye healthy by providing oxygen and nutrients from the blood vessel. Now in order for the neural impulses from the retina to get to the brain, they need to be sent through the optic nerve. This is located in the back of the eye and is made up of the retinal ganglion axon. Neural impulses in the optic nerve will travel from the eye, briefly stop over at the thalamus, then travel to the primary visual cortex located in the back of the brain, where the information will be processed in the occipital lobe. So we've gone over the structures of the eye, but we still have to talk about light and what happens and how we process all this sensory information. Light radiates from a source in waves. Different waves have different frequencies and different frequencies correspond to different kinds of light, which will correspond with different colors. When looking at light waves, we have to look at the wavelength, which is the distance between each peak. A short wavelength will often be seen as cooler colors, blues and purples, while longer wavelengths will be perceived as warmer colors, such as reds and oranges. We also have amplitude, which determines how intense a color is going to be. When talking about color, we also need to talk about the two-stage theory. This tries to explain how we perceive color. These two theories on their own do not explain everything about color, but together they provide a more comprehensive idea. The first theory proposed by Young and Helmholtz in 1802 states that our photoreceptors work in teams of three, red, green, and blue. They came up with this hypothesis because it was known that any color can be created by combining the light waves of those three primary colors. This theory is known as the trichromatic theory. The theory states that we are able to see colors because different wavelengths of light stimulate combinations of these three color receptors. This theory was confirmed by research later where they were able to learn that the color receptors respond 
responsible for this were red, green, and blue sensitive retinal cones. There's also the opponent processing theory, which complements the trichromatic theory. This theory states that information that is received from the cones is sent to the ganglion cell. This causes some neurons to become excited and others inhibited. Essentially, when you are looking at the color green, red is being inhibited. Each color has a pair, and when you look at one color, it inhibits the other. The opponent processing theory believes that we have three pairings, red, green, blue, yellow, and white, black. This theory explains why we have an after image. For example, if you stare at this picture of the American flag long enough, your green and yellow cones will get excited and eventually start to get tired. When I change the screen to white, you should be able to see the flag briefly as red, white, and blue. This is because white encompasses all of the wavelengths at once. Since your green and yellow signals have slowed down, but your red and blue receptors have not been used, they get excited and you temporarily have your red and blue overpower your green and yellow. So for a brief moment, you see the American flag as red, white, and blue. Sometimes people lack certain photoreceptors for certain colors. This causes them not to be able to see certain colors. One type of color blindness is known as monochromatism. This is where everything is seen in different shades of one color because they only possess one type of cone photopigment instead of the normal three types. There's also achromatism. This is when people can only see black, white, and gray because they lack retinal cones. This is one of the most rare forms of color blindness. The next form of color blindness is the most common and it is dichromatism. This is when the eye only possesses two of the three types of retinal cones. This leads to confusion between certain colors depending on what type of cones the eye is lacking. The most common type is red green color blindness. And lastly, if you can see all of the colors, then you have trichromatism. One last concept I want to address is synesthesia. This is a neurological condition in which one of your senses is stimulated and it'll result in the stimulation of another sense at the same time. If you have synesthesia, you might be hearing me talk right now and see certain colors for every word I say. Traditionally, synesthesia is triggered by something and it's involuntary, meaning the person cannot control it. There are many different types of synesthesia. Another example is someone who experiences flavors when they hear certain words. And just like that, we're done with another topic review video. Now you know the drill. Answer the review questions on the screen. Check your answers in the comments below. Don't forget to hit subscribe so you get notified when I post more videos. And of course, check out the ultimate review packet. It's got resources for every single unit of AP psychology. And it'll definitely help you get an A in your class and a five on the national exam. And if you need some more help and want to bond with some awesome fellow psych students, well, check out the Discord server as well. You can find all those awesome resources in the description of this video. As always, I'm Mr. Sin, and until next time, I'll see you online.